As a child, I have seen fancy wallpapers of the Pola, of uh, all these places. But we never had this feeling that uh, you'll be there someday. I think I will never say ever again in my everyday life that I'm tired. Because when you think you're tired, there's still something more that you can do. This will motivate me to get to more, to explore uh, nature. This expedition is a, a life changer. going to Tomok village from Tromsø. Uh, see the weather, it's snowing, heavy snowing, and I see the uh, windy, windy, so, and I'm a bit afraid, afraid that I will freeze. Oh yeah, Monica, you're gonna be suffering just like him. You're, you're Monica, what are you most excited about? The people, the team, seeing what we can do together and the adventure. This is something I've never done before and I've always wanted to. So it's snowing a lot here in Norway, as you can see. And this is how it's been the last uh, two weeks, pretty much. So we have heavy snow to uh, push through for the coming days. Welcome to Norway and to uh, Fjellar and Polar. grab them and you hold on to them and you keep them on this observation. This is the most important thing because uh, it's all about uh, surviving in the nights and the extreme cold conditions. We have to be fast, we have to be efficient, we have to do it in the right way. Yeah. Just to figure out where everything is going, you know? because you have lots of uh, the, these cords and these uh, pieces and to know where everything is going. I'm just going crazy. <laughs> it's like a puzzle. <laughs> you see? Yellow. Yeah, right. I'm used to 35 degrees Celsius. I don't know what will happen here. So I'm not afraid, but anxious and excited. But it is a risk because they are making these um, simple mistakes by letting their gloves go and they are working too much with bare hands. So they will soon realize that the cold is very clear and, and, and present. Yeah, we collected all our equipment. We have our tent now and we have our sleeping bags and the snow snowshoes and yeah, I'm really eager, like everyone else, I guess, to meet the dogs and to get to know how to ride the dog sled. They're so loud, the dogs are so loud. <laughs> For 43 years of my life, I've never played with dogs, touched dogs, feed dogs, and anything to do with dogs. I hope they are friendly. <laughs> so I'm getting my, my whole sled packed up now, trying to get the things that I'm going to need first, most accessible. I've got the big gloves here. I'm getting my parka out now because I mean, so that I'll have it accessible when it's like really cold and we stop. And then we've got the kitchen for the dogs down here. Many of the participants have applied for one, two, and three years, and finally they're here. It's their big moment. It's such a pleasure to be able to share this uh, adventure with them, and uh, I wish them the best of luck. Yes, and Polar 2018 starts now!
<laughs> this is a pretty dramatic change of scenery for me. I mean, where we are now is, I mean, this has to be one of the most beautiful places in the world right here. What's interesting is like, these dogs seem like they're so happy to just work together. And I mean, they just want to pull this sled, which is fantastic because I want to be on this sled, riding it. It is hard in the beginning to, to ride a sledge, but then when you relax a bit, and if you feel the dogs, and if you feel the nature, it's getting easier. When you're driving here in this mountain area, there's like basically nothing in here. And we are kind of far away already from the like uh, civilization, you know. <laughs> so this was the only option back in the days, how you could like travel around mountain area and go to places. Some have said that you were going to think much, like when you stand here, you will have a lot of thoughts in your head, but for me, it's blank. I don't know, it's like harmony. Wild day, amazing. I think seven hours of sledding or six hours of sledding. It was blue skies and then it changed to only white, then it was a storm, then it was just... Ah. And now we're feeding the dogs because they did all the work today. It was, I can't believe they just kept going and they're not barking anymore, which means they're tired. people to pitch our tent. Yesterday there were just two and there were pretty enough. So yeah, but we will make it. So the only way to kind of keep the tent down at the moment is bodies. So I've got a bit of a master plan and I'm going to pitch our tent behind other people's tents to cut some of the wind out. <laughs> we have to be extra particular about how we set up the tent because uh, we don't want to get up in the middle of the night to fix it. So we're taking and being very careful, so we're doing it right. Another thing we did was we put the vestibule in the front, in the leading end. That way it gave us a second wind barrier against us and our sleeping area. Is it different from yesterday when you practiced? Uh, it is because it's just such an open area. The wind is way stronger and we are both tired and you know we try to be patient with each other but I can feel the tension it's like you do this no you did that and that's not right I mean you know we should just help each other but it's you know still the first night so I think it's gonna get better and better day by day hopefully because just look at this it's just something it's not right with you. Oh. One ball. Yay. are making our special mountain dish. It is go called uh, White Miracle. You know the ingredients, right? Uh, snow. Snow! Uh, oh, happiness, uh, <laughs> freedom, uh, fresh air, you know. We both are very like organized persons. <laughs> it's like uh, we have a systems in our backpacks 
yeah, yeah. like where we put our pants and we are talking each other like okay let's yeah. put the clothes there on the top and these yellow clothes here and you know yeah this is yeah. the system yeah this is our living room kitchen kind of thingy By the way, do you want uh, porridge or uh, misli tomorrow? Porridge, yes, for sure. Yeah. This is something I have never done before and Arctic is treating good but yeah the wind uh, was very fast yesterday night and the cold, I'm not used to this much cold. I was even not able to uh, open the tent because it was so windy and I had to walk up to there and uh, the wind was so fast that it was moving me. So we have to get down as fast as possible so that we can avoid more. Uh, wind, storms. Oh yeah, porridge. My favorite breakfast. <laughs> mm. Yeah. How did you sleep, Mimi? It was cold. Yeah. I was a bit cold too, and I needed to pee, but yeah, it was cold, <laughs> so I didn't want it to, and so I still haven't peed. <laughs> no. yeah. Sorry ladies, I really have to interrupt you now because I have boiling water for your thermoses. No, in five minutes it will be cold water. So you have to act and run down and fill up your thermoses, okay? It's so wonderful to see and absorb the power of the dogs. Yeah, and be together with them. And when I was writing, I was thinking about songs um, of you two raised by wolves and I felt myself like uh, one of the dogs yeah we're starting out on similar terrain today than what we finished with yesterday and then we're gonna drop down below the tree line which will be kind of nice for tonight because it means hopefully we won't be setting up the tent in the same kind of like windy conditions Now we start. Paula, I mean, before it sounds like nothing related to me before, you know, because I'm from a tropical country. And now I think it has extended my horizon. So in the future, I think from now, Paula will be just a part of me. It's unreal. You can't, you can't describe this to anybody, you just, no amount of pictures that I share or none of the videos I watched even get me close to just what it, feel, it feels like to be here. Yeah, yesterday was my first time and like first few minutes I was like, woo, but after a few minutes I was like, um, I had like lots of emotions came to my mind and because this is not just for like excitement. Like we have a long way to go. I'll do my best until the end, yeah. Tent here. I'm trying to uh, make a basement for our tent, for our home tonight. Oh my god, it's a frozen lake. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll hear the water moving underneath. Should be good. We are getting much better at learning each other and how to communicate. It's 
strengths and weaknesses are coming out pretty quick, so we're, we're compensating for them. So, yeah. Overall, when I'm just looking around, I see tents that looks way better than yesterday. They're developing very nicely. They had a very hard first day with a lot of wind and uh, pretty challenging first pitch of the tents up in the mountains. But you can see how good that actually is because now already they are slightly getting into their routines and step by step we will see a, a very nice progress I believe. Yep, got it. The other side. Okay. She said I look like her brother. No. No, but that's a compliment, honey. I thank you. Oh, maybe Don't last night this. our tent was really, really, don't, don't tell this to you, but badly made. <laughs> don't tell this to you. So the wind was blowing and everything happened like he said. <laughs> it was snowing it, inside. It was, uh, it was snowing inside. I was like, am I hallucinating again? The snow is, my, the, my, we managed to make the microclimate inside of the tent. <laughs> like, first I saw butterflies, really, I did. Nobody believes me. Dogs, probably they are also happy. <laughs> I don't know. They are just trying to tell us something. Uh, this is their regular uh, evening song. We have for the night our bottles with hot uh, water that we took from the lake. So they can keep us uh, warm at the night because it's freezing out and uh, we're sleeping over the snow. We're about 10 centimeters over a lake. If we had a drill, we can uh, fish in here. We can do some fishing. But it's amazing how, how you get experience from this adventure. Uh, over day by day, you become uh, better. I think this expedition is a life changer. We humans, we are like already too far from nature, I, I think, and we should like now uh, see all this beauty we have around us and try to protect it. And this wilderness area, we don't have it that much anymore, so we, we should protect it. Yeah, no, I think we are getting, we will take off. And we're off. This team of dogs, we're working, I'm working with them now. You really gotta give them everything. You gotta give them everything. Cause they're counting on you. First day I thought it's the best day, and the second day I thought this is going to be the best day, and now today is the best day. <laughs> so I, I have to see how tomorrow is going to be. I think that's going to be the best day again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I was too fast on the way down on the slope down, uh, but I couldn't break. So. Uh, I did my best. We are trying to compress the snow so we don't fall through in the middle of the night. And this is the length of our bed, so the perfect size. Oh. Oh. 
down here. Snowshoes! We're building a uh, trench uh, where we're gonna sleep tonight. Yeah, and uh, snow is just a bit fluffy and we're a bit worried that maybe we will crash down during the night while we'll be sleeping. I think the most important lessons of the things I learned here was the two things Johan said, like, first, it's not about surviving outdoors, it's learning how to live. And yeah. that was like, yeah, yeah. it's so true. Mm. Harder. Hey, time to take your clothes off. I don't know if you, I want to sleep, I want to watch the Northern Lights. This is where I feel like I'm going to break my ankle. Oh, oh the stars! Oh my god! <laughs> I don't want to wake up. <laughs> I want to lay here. So good. Best night. It was so magical. It was so good. I got a bit of uh, northern lights and uh, yeah, the cold. It has been the most magical three days of my life. And I think I don't want this to end. I am so really lucky. proud of myself and of my tent buddy because I didn't think that I'm able and capable to do such a thing. How am I gonna sleep now on the floor with such a tiny mattress uh, in a tent? This is horrible, it's claustrophobic. And, but then you just, crisis after crisis after crisis, you grow and you grow and you grow and you become a better person and tent buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, so. Yeah. And I found a branch under my armpit. So <laughs> that's what was me. Polar. Yeah. That's that's what polar is all about. Yeah. All yeah. surprises. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't want this to end and uh, I'm a bit sad right now, but I guess in life, nothing lasts, everything must go on. The journey of a lifetime is, is completely true. I'm not sure how I feel <laughs> when I'm back, but I will feel some sort of sadness for sure. So Yeah, hold it up high, big guy. It was the most challenging outdoor experience I've ever had and I'm very happy that I did it. You can't even put it in words. Once you're out here on that sled and you're cruising across the tundra, uh, it's just there's nothing like it. You're gonna have some. It's the whole the whole trip. 
the whole trip is just like a golden ticket to life. Like seriously, it just makes you realize how small you are. And <laughs> I don't believe in ideologies and so on, but I believe if you change yourself, you change the world, and this, this one definitely changed. Yep. 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 Yep.